Hey, Dr. Burke. Hey, Ashley. You got a top athlete. He's clearly performing well, but his coach just can't seem to communicate with him properly. Okay. Hold on one second. Let's see. What's happening, I promise. Bless you. <laughs> Bless you, my child. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Dr. Brian. Hey, Ashley. What are mental game techniques you give to athletes to enhance their focus and concentration during games? Yeah, so the meditation, the mindfulness, the visualization, the breath work, the positive self-talk, and what I call enhanced communication skills, the ability to handle things in the moment as often as possible. The more we do the fundamentals of the mental game here, the better we get in general. And then we're building this crazy foundation so we can default into more presence as opposed to what most people default into, more worry or more head. Hey, Dr. Brown. Hey, Ashley. You just got out of college. It's your first spring training. It's your first, you know, camp. It's your first whatever. What are you telling this kid going into it? Well, the key is to have fun because otherwise it could be too much pressure. So um, the, the, there's often a tendency to put too much pressure on yourself as a top athlete. You know, it could be as a business person. It could be anywhere in life. But the higher you go, the more the pressure is. And so you want to remember to enjoy the, the moments and enjoy the process as well and make it fun along the way. Hey, Dr. Brown. Hey, Ashley. You have a college athlete? Yeah. Everybody wants him. Top pick, Heisman winner, all Pro Bowl. Grades start slipping. <laughs> he knows he's going to the pros. Grades just to crap. <laughs> what are you going to tell him? Well, you mean you got to get your act together in every area. This is part of on point energy, right? And so we're getting on point, you know, academically because it will affect the rest of his life because those are habits too. And so, you know, I mean, if he's sloppy in one area, he's likely to be sloppy in another area, and that can go for uh, for her as well. Hey, Dr. Rupp. Hey, Ashley. Team is performing excellent. Coach did, all the coach does is just give them negative feedback all the time. So what would you tell the coach? Yeah, so that's not uncommon, and I do have coaches that I coach, but in that case, if the person doesn't, if the, if the kid is like a team captain or something, he can actually have a personal conversation with the coach or a series of them to let the coach know in really decent ways that, hey, you know, what are we doing right here? So, you know, that's something that can be addressed. It's not easy because people are, 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 are often fearful in situations like that. But so what? I'm teaching everybody to be proactive motherfuckers here, basically. <laughs> Hey, Dr. Brett. Hey, Ashley. How do you help them? What is your role as a sports psychologist in terms of helping them no negotiate contracts and things of that nature? Well, it, you mean in terms of pro athletes? Mm -hmm. um, it's really about, you know, teaching them how to, like, honor themselves and trust their instincts and their intuition and ask the right questions, right? So I'm always, like, helping people, whether they're a pro or not, develop and trust their intuition. I'm asking questions like, what does your gut say? And then I'm also part sounding board there as they explore that process, but I'm helping them get really proactive and handle agents, managers, and so on, you know, straight up directly and with a high level of proactivity. Awesome. Hey, Dr. Brett. Hey, Ashley. This year in football, we've seen a lot of, um, or not a lot, but we've seen a very different turn of events than we expected. If you are the coach of the, man, let's see, who got spanked the worst? I'd like to say the Cowboys did. Yeah. You're the coach of the Cowboys. You go back in that locker room. What are you saying to your team? I mean, I'm not a huge Mike McCarthy fan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so if I'm Jerry Jones, I'm firing Mike McCarthy. He's going to keep him on for another year and then maybe go after an old timer like Bill Parcells because I guess he's, the, you know, got the best record ever. Um, I think he might be a little rigid, too, for the modern NFL. I think his time has passed. Um, so I'm not, you know, if I'm Mike McCarthy, I'm like, you know, he's got to make the change. Mike McCarthy's got some changes to make. He's sloppy in certain areas. Clock management is horrendous. And then when it comes to big games, he's just, he's not there yet. Maybe he was in the past, but he's going to need to get on more on point, especially under more pressure situations. Hey, Dr. Ryan. Hey, Ashley. Making weight is something that is in basically every sport. How do you encourage athletes to make weight and still maintain integrity while doing that? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, like things like, you know, boxing or fighting or UFC is going to be a lot more stringent than mm -hmm. other sports. I don't think you have to worry too much in football, right? Um, but 
in in general, um, you know, that's a difficult process and that's a gradual process for people that we get better and better and better at figuring out. But, you know, if it's specific, specific to their sport, then it's going to become primary. If it's less specific, you know, a, a sport like football where it's important but not always immediately necessary, then it's a more gradual process. But really, it's about, you know, creating the set point, you know, where your system takes care of itself, more or less. You know, I mean, obviously cutting weight is another issue for UFC and so on. Mm. But that set point, that's going to be determined largely through your habits and your routines on a daily, weekly, monthly basis.